to friends and family to another anniversary week short video. So this morning, even though our Every Bit Counts Challenge doesn't start until August 1, I'm finding that I'm having things to do on the daily. So yesterday, I realized I hadn't had any meat for over a week. <laughs> and thinking of B12 deficiency, I decided, you know what, I'm going to find something in the freezer to thaw out this was actually day before yesterday, and cook up. So I found, and it is so good, guys. I had gotten it at Alti, and I vacuum sealed it in the already sort of vacuum seal pack so it wouldn't get freezer burnt. And I believe I had purchased it in the fall back when things were a little cheaper. But it, I thought it was just a pork roast, and then I looked at it again, and it said carnitas. It has the most delicious tomatoey spicy sauce. So I cooked that in the crock pot, saved a little bit of the meat, had some yesterday, have a little bit for today. And I have before made homemade vegetable soup with some leftover like roast meat. I think it's the best. I prefer it over hamburger, just my personal opinion. Y'all look at this. Is this not gorgeous? Yes, it is gorgeous. So I was able to get five quarts of vegetable soup using my homegrown tomatoes that I had in the freezer, three packages of Great Value brand frozen vegetables, some cabbage I had on hand, some onion, and some homegrown green beans. And I have to tell you all, and I saved a little bit that wouldn't fit in the jar. It is delicious. So it gave me an idea in case you're like, well, I don't know if the every bit challenge is gonna be something I can do. And y'all, if you can't do it every day, I may not be able to do it every day. That's fine. I think being mindful for an entire month, being mindful while we still have, if you're in the climate, at the time of the year where things are still producing while there's fresh produce, it's a great time to be mindful of what do I need to put away for winter. So I needed to cook anyway. So I, in, in effect, will get three meals. The one I had yesterday, the one I'll have today, and then I also have some soup plus five quarts, which I'm sure my son will talk me out of one, for my pantry shelf. So as you're cooking, it really takes almost no more effort to make a little bit more of something, you know, to double the recipe, or I don't use a recipe for a lot of things, so just, you know, add to it. I also use my homegrown home canned tomato juice. It is so good, y'all. I use no broth, just the tomato juice. It is just a burst of fresh garden taste. So just some food for thought if you're like struggling, like I'm not sure what I would do. And I'll have more ideas as we go. So today, what am I doing? I've had some requests, and I will make this brief because I've done it before, for a little more information on the freeze dryer. So what I have before me here is, uh, that's, well, actually this one should go down here. Three dozen and a half plus more than two dozen in the refrigerator. So I need to go ahead and freeze dry eggs. I'm just getting three a day now because Miss Violet is sitting on eggs. They don't lay when they're broody. I will tell you all because the question will come up later. I'm not sure whether the eggs will hatch, but she is being faithful to set on them. Sit on them, set. I think it's set, S-E-T. I have trouble with that word, y'all. My education is failing me. Chickens can have a habit. I've read about it. And y'all know I'm a new chicken mama, by no means an expert, just passing information I've learned. And it is a bad habit. There are chicken wars over eggs, over nesting boxes. Miss Jolene, she is um, hanky panky Jolene. Not only does she make a break for it, if she wants to lay an egg and she doesn't like who's laid before her or how the eggs are positioned, she will move them. Well, I've only lost two eggs in all of the time that I've had chickens. So dozens and dozens and dozens of eggs, only two have been broken. And actually they weren't 
totally broken. They just had a peck mark in them where, you know, she was trying to peck, moo, peck, moo. So one of Miss Violet's eggs must have gotten away from her or they were picking on her and one rolled away. And Miss Jo, I believe it was Miss Jolene, broke that egg. So maybe it smelled funny. Maybe she's jelly. I don't know. The reason I think it's Jolene is while I was taking care of Violet last night because she's getting separate food and water and lots of pets, which she isn't super thrilled about. <laughs> Just saying. Um, Jolene came sauntering in and I knew she'd already laid and started to eat the eggshell. So that is a bad habit your chickens can get into. That's why I try to get the eggs out right away since I know she is at least prone to pecking and moving eggs. So I cleaned the coop, shut the door for a while. I did add quite a bit of cedar shavings hoping that they wouldn't smell any remaining egg. I think I got it all out, but, and lots of poo. <laughs> Poo's not very appetizing when you're getting ready to do food, but that's okay. So that's been a little challenge, but she still has two underneath her. Um, she's getting more protective because I tried to move her over this morning and she pecked at me and then like the feathers on the back of her neck raised up. I think she's like, listen, I got this. I know how to be a mom. mom. <laughs> so <laughs> tried to leave her alone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to crack these eggs into a bowl. I like to put no more than four cups in each tray because they freeze dry so much faster and it is humid today. Y'all, we got half an inch of rain yesterday, supposed to get a little more this evening. It is 81% humidity right now. So if you notice me perspiring, that's why. So I'm gonna get busy on the eggs and I will take you in and show you the freeze dryer and talk a little bit about the process and why I'm trying to make every bit count. Stay tuned. So just to give you all an idea of how I prep the eggs for the freeze dryer, um, I just crack three to four cups, depends. I think I'm only gonna have enough for three cups in each today. And then I use my handy dandy Cuisinart smart stick <laughs> to just immersion blend. And you want them really, really well blended so that your eggs don't come out grainy. And if you're using them in a recipe, you are truly getting a fully blended egg. So I'm gonna continue working here. Then we'll go on in and look at the freeze dryer and I'll talk about how simple it is to freeze dry your own eggs. I will try to speak up over the freeze dryer noise. So I have the Harvest Right medium freeze dryer with the oil-free pump. So I'm just going to add in my fourth and final tray of eggs. Aren't those beautiful? And you do want to make sure that your trays are evenly filled. In other words, don't put four cups in one and five in another and two in another. So I came in earlier and flipped this on. And what it will tell you is um, wait at least 15 minutes until the chamber's cool. So I've done that. Load my food, I've done that. Don't mix frozen with non-frozen. That's another important point. And then back here, y'all. Oh, you can't see right here. Is a valve which you want to turn off, which is going to make them uh, like a crisscross. You want to make sure that your drain bucket, which is down below, is empty. Otherwise, when it starts vacuum freezing, it will suck the water from the bucket and ruin your whole batch. So continue and it will tell you it's freezing so right now it's at 58 degrees it will go down to 30 40 below and then once it is completely frozen then it will start vacuum freezing which pulls the moisture out and then we will get ice 
and it's already starting to form. If you can see the white inside this black line, um, all of the liquid water will freeze to the outside and then later we can either naturally or let the machine defrost. I usually use natural unless I'm doing load after load after load. How long will this take? Probably around 24 hours. And once it's finished, then what I do is I use my Ace Instapot blender and I powder up the eggs and quickly vacuum seal them because you don't want them absorbing moisture. Then each time I use out of the jar, I need to re-vacuum seal it. So that's how I've been utilizing the eggs. Right now I have about two gallons and you may be like, oh my word, <laughs> you have enough eggs. But think about it, y'all. That could last me through the entire winter. I don't eat fried eggs. I eat scrambled for casseroles, you know, like breakfast casseroles for baking needs, for bread, if I'm using eggs and bread, for brownies, all the good things. Um, or an Asian stir fry where you want some egg in there, egg drop soup. There's so many uses where you can use the powdered eggs. Well, let me grab a jar and show you. So you do wanna make sure that they're completely dry. And you see as I'm turning this, there's no moisture in here. Um, this was done June 14th of 22. How long do they last? Well, I'm not terribly worried about it because I'm sure I will use the eggs up over winter. Um, I've seen one year, I've seen three to five years, and definitely it will last longer vacuum sealed in a jar than it will vacuum sealed in a clear um, vacuum seal bag. I'm not talking mylar, I'm talking clear. The reason I wouldn't use a mylar bag personally is you would have to cut the seal and then reseal it. And if you continue to do that each and every time, pre-sealing your bag's gonna be about this big. So this makes more sense for me. I keep my vacuum sealer on the shelf in here near the table. It's just a real quick, um, put the food saver, lid which looks like this you just snap it over before you put the ring on vacuum seal it label it and you're good to go so this is a way that i can make every egg count and i realize not all of you have a freeze dryer and i would just say use what you have available to you whether that is store purchased food that you are going to package in a more long-term way or leave it in its packaging and just put extra food on your shelf. Make every bit count. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do me a favor if you will. Go ahead and smash that like button and share my video if you know someone who'd like to be a part of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. So this video will be Friday's video. I will have a, a more regular video, I hope, up on Saturday. And then we will get started. That's the last of my everyday videos. We'll get started on more of a normal routine of see, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, a little bit longer videos. So, and hey, somebody mentioned, let me turn here, that they were having a bit of trouble hearing me. Y'all, I don't have a lavalier, you know, a, a microphone and I do have a very soft voice, so I'm going to try to do a little better on speaking up, not talking to the ground when I'm outdoors. It's tough when I'm outside because the sound just gets absorbed by the world. <laughs> so I will pay more attention to that. So thank you, um, Elaine, for bringing that to my attention. So I will see you all very soon, but in the meantime, be well, be healthy, be blessed, take care.